In this video, we can discuss about pharmacology of hemostatic agents and coagulants. It is an important topic from pharmacology of drugs used in cardiovascular system. In the hemostatic agents in the angle, hemostasis in the angle in the angle. Okay. So, hemostasis is a physiological process that stop bleeding at the site of injury while maintaining normal blood flow elsewhere in the circulation. Now, we have a body in our body. In that body, we have to stop the bleeding in that area. It is a physiological process. In that process, in the rest of the body parts, in the circulation, we have to maintain the normal blood flow. Bleeding stop je ina proses ni ana hemostasis inu barai. Okay, so inggane ana ida stop iya ni lada ana. That the the blood loss is stopped by the formation of hemostatic plaques. So this is the first stage of wound healing, and this hemostasis process involve coagulation and blood changing from a liquid to gel formation. So the hemostasis and the blood coagulation involve a complex interaction between the injured vessels, platelet and coagulation factors. Now, this is hemostasis. This is coagulation, blood constriction, along with the process of the process of hemostasis. Okay. Now, we have to look at the flow chart. In our body, we have to look at the injury. We have to look at the three actions. One is, Every day, ano injury wandh terlalu, blood vessels ni injury wandh terlalu, abda blood vessels ni construction anda. Adu, uru temporary hemostatic plug kene helpe ino uru factor ana, vessel what contraction anu arre. Adu boleh dene, abda inda unda injury karena there will be some exposure to collagens. Okay, so this collagen may leads to intrinsic pathway of coagulation cascade. As well as collagen exposure will lead to platelet reaction. So, in our body, in our blood, in our platelets, we will lose platelet aggregates. This vessel construction, vessel wall construction, lose platelet aggregation, and create a temporary hemostatic plug. Okay. Now, in tissue thromboplastin, in our body, we will release an injury in our body. That is why we have a coagulation cascade in the extrinsic pathway. If we have a coagulation, we will have a mediator in the body. Now, we will act in a temporary hemostatic plug in the body. This is a basic step in our body. What is the hemostatic agents? What is the coagulants? What is the anti-coagulants? We will learn the topics in the topics. अबो इधर आना normal process hemostasis इन्दे components इन्दो बारे में तो first one is vasoconstriction blood vessel ये वडे आनो injury लाये तो आ blood vessel उन्दे constrict आओ then collagen release इन्दो आउनो तो कुन्दो collagen platelet इन्दे activate ही अबो अद fibrinogen इन्दा कुन्दो platelet plaques गल इन्दा आउन इतने रंडे रंगों डे आना नमल primary hemostasis इन्दो बारे में तो platelet aggregation उन vasoconstriction इन्दो इन्दो इटला दा आना primary hemostasis इन्दो बारे इनि टिश्यू फैक्टर्स गले थ्रोम्बोप्लास्टिन पॉले गला संगति गलो कर रिलीज है इन्हें समय तब डे कोयागुलेशन कस्कार्ड कोयागुलेशन पाथवे नारकुम इन्हें तब डे थ्रोम्बिन इंडाउ इ थ्रोम्बिन फाइब्रिन और जिन्हें फाइब्रिन आकुम इ फाइब्रिन उम प्लेटलेट प्लग्स गुलों कोडी टाना ब्लड क्लोट्स � बाकीलास तलत थ्रोम्बिन एक्टिवेट द इन लल रीडी लल लोर एफेक्ट मुड़े अवधे इंडा आउन्ड ओके अब ये ओरो कोयाकुलेशन उम फाइब्रिनोजन उम प्लेटलेट एग्रीगेशन उम कुड़े लाम वेरिना दान सेकेंडरी हीमोस्टेसिस इन द वारे ओके दन ब्लड क्लोटे इधर आयेंगे ना आ ओरो एरिया ले ब्लड डायरेस्टेड हो पिन्ने इ this is a normal hemostasis in the process. This is our topic load to get pharmacology of hemostatic agents as well as coagulants. So what is mean by hemostatic agent? These are the agent that will arrest bleeding either by vasoconstriction or by promoting coagulation of the blood. Now we have coagulants in the hemostatic local agents in the hemostatic agents. So this is classified into 
local agents and systemic agent. Systemic agent is known as coagulants that will promote the coagulation of the blood. Now examples of uh, local agents are adrenaline, thrombin, fibrin glue, gelatin, calcium alginate and tranexamic acid. And systemic agent or coagulants are vitamin K, fibrinogen, anti-hemophilic factor, ethamsalate and desmopressin. So first we can discuss about local hemostatic agent, it is also known as tiptics. Okay. So these are the substances which are used to stop external bleeding from a local and approachable site. Topical or area, we can approach the external item agents in local hemostatic agents. Okay. So these are particularly effective on oozing surfaces like tooth socket and abrasion. For thought and diet, we can agents. Now let's see what are the different agents. First one is absorbable substances like fibrin, fibrin which are prepared from human plasma and dried as a sheet or foam or we can use gelatin form or we can use oxidized cellulose as strip which can be cut and placed in the wound. All this will provide a uh, meshwork which will activate the clotting mechanism and they will stop the bleeding. So simple on these agents okay, absorb the materials and meshwork in the kit uh, Floating mechanism then activate in the varayana, uh, process of matron okay. So that is absorbable material. Now other local hemostatic agents are adrenaline. Adrenaline number particular drug on adrenergic drugs and neurotransmitter on the varjet and adrenal medulla and adrenal gland and release in the hormone on. So either namak local hemostatic act in the vasoconstriction provided vasoconstriction and dakitan. And 0.1 percentage solution is used to control capillary oozing. And it should be avoided in patient with serious complications since this adrenaline will act on adrenergic receptor and it will produce increasing heart rate and there are problems with adrenaline. Cardiovascular complications in patients in the UCR. Now these are used in bleeding after tooth extraction and from other site also. So that is the use of adrenaline. Now another hemostatic agent is local hemostatic agent is gelatin which is an absorbable hemostatic available as a sponge or filling and which are used in surgical procedures. Now coming to another one uh, astringents such as tannic acid and metallic salt. Occasionally these are applied on bleeding gum as well as bleeding piles. Now thrombin which is obtained from bovine plasma and which, which can be applied as dry powder or freshly prepared solution to bleeding surface in case of hemophilics. So that is all about the local hemostatic agents. Now coming to the uh, pharmacology of coagulants. This is a very important topic. We will talk about the coagulants and anticoagulants. We will talk difference in the coagulants and anticoagulants. So, what is coagulants? Coagulants are the substances or systemic agent which will promote blood coagulation. And where will we use the coagulants? which are mainly indicated in hemorrhagic states. Different diet la body and down the bleeding conditions le, adine, uh, coagulation promote it. We use in the drugs galana, coagulants. Now ex, uh, this is classified into vitamin K as well as miscellaneous agent and example for vitamin K is phytanadione and K3 like menadione, acetaminophthone, menaphthone, then menadione sodium bisulfate, menadione sodium diphosphate, these are some examples for vitamin K. Now miscellaneous coagulants are fibrinogen, anti-hemophilic factor, desmopressin, adrenochromo mono semicarbamycin, then ethamsilate and rupin. These are examples for miscellaneous coagulants. Now first one is uh, vitamin K. In the vitamin K in the as we all know vitamin K is an fat soluble vitamin which are present in the dietary principle and which is required for the synthesis of clotting factor. And we have to say that we have to say that water soluble vitamins are oil soluble and fat soluble vitamins are oil Vitamin K is a fat soluble vitamin. That is the main function of the clotting factor synthesis. There are different forms of vitamin K1, K2, 
K2, K3. K1 is also known as phytanadione and K3 is menadiol di sodium diphosphate. And the daily requirement is uh, 3 to 10 microgram per day external source may be sufficient. However, total requirement of adult has been estimated to 50 to 100 microgram per day. Now, if we have a deficiency in this case, we have a problem with natural coagulation. Then, we have a problem with vitamin K. Okay. So, this is, actually, this is rarely responsible for bleeding. Because we have a problem with vitamin K in our body. But, it may occur due to some diseases like liver diseases, obstructive jaundice, malabsorption and long term antimicrobial therapy which will alter the intestinal flora. This is one reason why we have a little bit of prolonged antimicrobial therapy in our body and in our body and in GI system we inhibit microbial flora. So, we inhibit the microbial flora and inhibit the microbial flora. That is why we have vitamin K deficiency. Now, how can we, how can we there will be some bleeding tendency due to the lowering of level of prothrombin which is a clotting factor. Then uh, it can be seen as hematuria, there will be some uh, presence of blood in urine. Then common uh, site of bleeding other than this is GIT, GI tract bleeding in dava, nose in dava, under the skin like uh, uh, ecchymosis. Uh, ecchymosis is in the blood in the adil, uh, uh, Bleeding over the car and down the discoloration and anomaly like chemosis and worry. Okay, so these are the different manifestations of vitamin K deficiency. Now, coming to mechanism of action of vitamin K, in any other vitamin K or coagulant diet active in the chain, they will act as a cofactor at late stage in the synthesis of coagulation factors or coagulation protein or clotting factors. Either can kind of clotting factor, especially they will. Uh, help for the synthesis of prothrombin which is the factor 2, then factor 7, factor 9 and factor 10. All these factors are uh, synthesized by liver. Now, when liver is the clotting factor of synthesis, the cofactor is acting as a vitamin K function. Okay. So, vitamin K dependent changes uh, of clotting factor confirm, uh, confirms the capacity to bind at calcium bind it to calcium and to get bound with the phospholipid surface. This is a coagulation cascade in participate in the essential property of calcium binding in the way phospholipid bound in the capacity in the way. Okay. So, this coagulant is acting in the intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway in the coagulation cascade. Coagulation cascade in the way, intrinsic and extrinsic coagulation pathway in the extrinsic tissue damage in the way, rapid, intrinsic in the way, slow in the way, factor 12A, factor 11 activate team, 11A, 9 activate team, 9A, 10 in activate team, factor 10 in activate team, 10, factor 10, prothrombin, clotting factor 2 in prothrombin, 2A IQ matum, thrombin and the factor 2 activated factor 2 aana. E thrombin aana fibrinogen, fibrin IQ matum another. Fibrin le clotting factor 13 were in the same aana. Namak insoluble fibrin IT namla body le coagulation aana kanda. Ni patu ani engal physiology le body chetna. Okay. Apo idle calcium were in the factors le lla lla clotting factors in the synthesis name cofactor IT actia in the lla aana. Vitamin K is the main mechanism of action, especially factor 2 that is prothrombin, factor 7, factor 9 and factor 10. In this case, clotting factor is the synthesis of the co-factor IT act in the vitamin K is the mechanism of action. Okay. Now, coming to the adverse drug reactions of vitamin K. Usually, vitamin K are administered as parental preparations. So, it can be administered either as IV or as subcutaneous or IM injection. So, after IV injection, it may produce flushing, sweating and anaphylactic reaction. After subcutaneous or IM injection, it may produce severe pain and bleeding at the site of injection. And menadione, which is another vitamin K derivative, which may cause hemolysis 
and other symptoms in newborn and hence it is not used especially in case of G6PD deficiency as well as neonates. This is vitamin K. Use vitamin K is not adverse effects. Preparations are not in the anaphylactic reactions. It is not the main item of the ADR. That is the injections are adverse reactions. That is the physical process. Injections are not in the same way. Output transcript Out and down the bleeding. In an ala caring of Matravana, Sadar Nagadil adverse the reactions in the Varnata, vitamin K. Okay. Now, coming to uses. Vitamin K is mainly used in dietary deficiency. Uh, vitamin K deficiency, other the Avshat in a body load to vitamin K uh, dietary supplement diet to Kitunilla in the Ninganamaka, vitamin uh, dietary deficiency in a treatment and vitamin K in the Kodaka Nivirum. And in case of prolonged antimicrobial therapy. So, Due to the prolonged antimicrobial therapy, there will be an alteration of industrial micro microbial flora. So, it will lead to absorption uh, uh, decreased. Uh, normal problem on the body microbial flora inhibited eye congenial, Korea diga materials in the absorption of the inhibited. Upon a summit deficiency in down the wound, other than a treaty amended to the vitamin K use here, I mean, preparations are right to use here. Then obstructive jaundice with hemorrhagic symptoms uh, or malabsorption syndrome that is uh, another use of vitamin K. Then liver diseases like uh, cirrhosis and viral hepatitis. Then in case of newborn, usually all the newborns have low level of prothrombin and other clotting factor. So newborns are not uh, vitamin K wear on the And also most important thing to uh, treat the overdose of anticoagulant, oral anticoagulant to control the bleeding in anticoagulant therapy as well as salicylate poisoning. For warfarin polyol anticoagulant drug in the overdose and diacoagulant, that is not treated, coagulation in the use of the antidote I to use in the vitamin K and varin. Okay. So that is all about the vitamin K. Now coming to the miscellaneous agents. Let's see one by one. First one is fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is a fraction of a human plasma which is employed to uh, or which is used to control bleeding in case of hemophilia, anti-hemophilic globulin deficiency and acute anti-fibrinogenic states. So that is the use of fibrinogen which is a fraction of human plasma. Namala okay. body le, blood le, plasma le in a fraction of fibrinogen and varin. Okay. Now second one is anti-hemophilic factor. It is a concentrated human anti-human globulin which is prepared from pooled human plasma which is indicated or which is used in case of hemophilia as well as anti-hemophilic global deficiency and it is highly effective in controlling bleeding episodes but uh, action is very very short. Now another uh, miscellaneous agent is desmopressin. Uh, it will release factor 8 as well as one billet factor from the vascular endothelium and it will stop bleeding in hemophilia and von billard diseases and adrenochromo mono semi -carbosone. It is believed to reduce capillary fragility, control oozing from raw surface and prevent micro vessel bleeding. So uh, like uh, in case of epistaxis that is the bleeding from the nose, hematuria, second, secondary hemorrhages from the wound. In the case uh, UCR level, but uh, the efficiency is uncertain. That one that I could use a other Sangadi Gudiana, Desmopressin and Warren. Okay. Now, another miscellaneous agent is routine. It is a plant glycoside claimed to reduce capillary bleeding and ethamcylate, which uh, it is also reduced capillary bleeding when platelet are ad adequate and probably exert anti hyaluronidase action or correct the abnormality of platelet adhesion. And this is used in the prevention and treatment of capillary bleeding in menorgia after abortion, postpartum hemorrhages, epistaxis, hematuria and after tooth extraction. So these, this is another miscellaneous coagulants. So that is all about the hemostatic agents as well as uh, coagulants. The coagulants are very important item the topic. Examiner namak differentiate between coagulants and anticoagulants and varne question chodikkunnadana allengil differentiate between vitamin k and varanjittum anticoagulant aayittulla heparin o allengil warfarin o edengilum onnu thammil differentiate cheyan chodikkarundu coagulant ennu varne mathram aayittu 5 mark question aayittu chodichu kandittulladana okay so hope it is clear thank you for watching this video